This is um, this question mainly help you to understand the basic logic behind the SPL, and more importantly, they want you to practice this and get the um, marks from the examiners to see uh, what kind of answers they like the most and um, uh, what kind of answers they uh, dislike the most. Okay, so <clears throat> let's check. Uh, let's take a look of this X bit, which is easy too. First X bit is about the home page of machine shop. You know. Um, this homepage is um, very easy. They want you, they, they, told, they told you their mission and they told you what they are doing and how many stores and what are the services they are providing. Let's read it together uh, very fast. Our mission is empowering home, make, uh, sorry, home owners to do it themselves. It's a DIY business, DIY business. We are a Boreas leading retailer of electronic machines and the tools for Home improvement, we sell a range of tools for both trade professionals and the retail customers who need tools for maintaining their own home. Now we now have 50 stores across Arboria and continuously to open the new ones. And we also provide after-service support for our product brought from us through our wholly owned subsidiary called InkSup. They, they have a subsidiary called InkSup, um, which is focusing on the after-sales services. And we are owning, uh, sorry, we are owned and managed by the people who started Machine Shop first store 15 years ago. And we, pr we pride ourselves in uh, continuing to give customers the same personal services as when we opened our first one. And we may have grown into a big company, but we remain a small company at heart. That means our value never changed. Core value never changed. This is the first page, so easy. Just to tell you some basic information behind the machine shop. The second page, second aspect about the basic financial information. Actually, in the real life, this financial information is useless. Why is that? Because we do not say your ROC is higher or lower if there's no competitors for us to com be compared. For example, at least we need to know some competitors a basic information for us to determine whether this company's financial statement and the financial performance is good or not. You can't simply just compare with yourself. But this question is just a rather simple question. We do not have the competitors' information as well. But in the real life exam, you need to have you need to be careful of that. Don't always compare about yourself. Compare with yourself previously. You need to compare with your competitors, especially the direct competitors. Don't forget that, right? Guys, this is very simple question, uh, very simple um, financial statement, but we can calculate some basic financial ratios according to that site, such as the profit margin, interest cover, guarantee ratios. And after that, we, we, we know how much debt they have and whether the debt finance or the equity finance, which one is better for this company. We can decide accordingly, right? Guys, and XP number three will be the article from Business Life. Don't forget, in your exam, we have the articles, we have the uh, interviews, we could also have the uh, newspaper expressions. A lot of different medias to be used in your real life, is, uh, real life combat exam. So <clears throat> this article talk about the um, machine shops business model. And after you read the model, you know that they are lucky, they are very lucky, right? Okay, let's read it together, perhaps. Machine shop headed by Jeff Ding goes from strength to strength, hand in hand. The company which sells the small electronic machines and tools opened its 50 stores last week. 50 stores last week. Machine shop sells to both trade people and retail customers. So that's the customer group. We know that already. As it is estimated that 65% of the sales are to retail customer. That means another 35% of sales are for business customers. That means the uh, wholesalers or trade people. And the machine shop opened its first store 15 years ago. Currently, a further two stores are opened every month. This, is, uh, uh, this sentence shows that the business model is good. The fundamental logic behind the business model is proved to be valid. So, uh, the speed is fast. Each month, two stores is easily to attract the VC venture capitalist attention. Do you agree? Yes. And I carry on. The company has no direct competitors. Oh, you don't have any competitors. That means you're in a niche market. Niche market, guys. No competitors. Niche market. 
a segment niche market is a segmentation of the market that does not have um, competitors or uh, only few competitors. In simple English, if you can if you can dominate that market, you dominate the price. It's very profitable to have a niche market. Very profitable. Niche means profit, right? And most uh, most firms offering similar machines only sell them to trade people. Oh, this is the reason. This is the reason why there's no competitors because they focus on trade and you focus on the retail. So when they realized your focus is more profitable, it is easy for them to transform their business into your way. At that time, you will be in trouble. So what's your suggestion? Easy, help the company to build up the barriers, not to discourage our potential competitors to go in. So what are those barriers? For example, the economics of skills, for example, like the uh, patents or the copyrights, those are all the barriers that we can consider. So which one is better for the machine shop? You need to tell me later on. All right, guys, carry on. In many respects, the machine shop has defined a new market, a uh, consumer market made up of individuals who wish to do their own home improvement. Machine shop is the only company which at present seems to understand the dynamic of the market. That means the marketing skill or uh, they, know the, they know the market better than the others. Machine shop is a private company still wholly owned by its uh, by its directors wholly owned, and the CEO Dufting is well known as one of our most successful and colorful entrepreneurs. He is proud of uh, how he has grown the machine shop from one store into the national chain. All directors work full time for the company and have been with the company since it was founded. That means the job satisfactory of the company is very high. In simple English, we can see that their turnover rate of staff is rather low because they are happy with their work. Well, the company has been successful in its core business. It has not been so successful in its acquisition. Wow, this is poor. Why? Because the question asks us to evaluate the potential acquisition target FRG. And accordingly, we do not have successful experiments in the acquisition. That means our previous acquisition of uh, our previous acquisition experiences does not count here, right, guys? In 2015, it acquired two companies based in Arboria, which still trade as independent companies. The purchase of the lock trains was prompted by the need of the machine shop to have the dedicated and reliable logistics. So they acquired lock train because they want the logistic networking. The post acquisition performance, we call them a PMI, post merge integration, was sorry, um, performance of the company was spoiled by the dispute between Dufting and the senior management. That means the personality clash. These two guys don't like each other. And this was due to the personality clash caused by the different way of doing business. Eventually, the senior management of Rock Trend was removed and replaced by the people more allied with the corporate culture of the machine shop in simple English. If you listen to me, you stay. If you don't listen to me, get out. So this is the very rough way. And the second to last paragraph, Intrust was also acquired in 2015. Inks up. What is that? To provide the enhanced service facilities to people who had purchased the machines from machine shop, the customer feedback showed that many customers were unimpressed by machine shop the after sale services. That means we are not good at doing after sale services. So, in order for us to take good care of the after sale services, we acquired a company called Inksup to do that. Inksup already provided support for many retail electronic pro product, and so Machine Shop bought the company with the intention of using it to provide support for Machine Shop's customers. However, the initial feedback was negative because the Inksup services provided a poor level of service. How are we going to judge that? Right. What is your judgment? What is your uh, measurement system? So we need to think about it twice. Perhaps there, you know, the reason that we acquire this company is, for, is asking them to do the better service, but they are not doing that. They are not doing a good job for that. What's the reason? Personality clash, culture shock, or lack of training? Which one? Right. So coupled with the arrogant approach to the customers, 
a retraining scheme together with a selected redundancy has not addressed these problems. As the company reaches 50 store, we wish luck for the next stage. So basically, the whole article tells us something that something like here. First, you work in the niche market, you need to build up their barriers. Second, do we have the experiences of acquisition? Yes, we have. Are these successful? No. So if you do not have the successful experiences to be referred as, how can you prove that your acquisition in another country called Sealand will be successful even if the two acquisitions of Inksup and um, uh, Locktrans are in your own country? Can you follow me guys? In simple English, in our own country, we failed. How can we prove that in another country, the acquisition will be successful? So you need to challenge, you need to prove the director of the board, uh, the board of directors of the machine shops to tell you the reasons to sustain that. All right guys, XP number four, board meeting menus. Date March 2018, there are a couple of members in your board attend that meeting. Um, apology and absent now. So who are them? Chairman, CEO, Dev Dean, Mike Botwin, Chief Buyer, that's the procurement director, and uh, Frank Butcher, the director of operation, and uh, Violet Wong, the CFO. All right, um, meeting caught up to order at 2 p.m. by Chairman Dev Dean. And chairman's statement, the chairman expressed the satisfaction that Machine Shop had just opened its 50 stores in Aboria. The current pace of new store operating shows that the company is still serving a large market where it can continue to prosper. That means the business model is okay. Mr. Dim reminded the meeting that the director had always agreed on the importance of growing the business to explore the machine shop's knowledge at home improvement market before the idea is copied within the Arboria and elsewhere in the world. That means this is the reason that they want to quickly expand their business because they are afraid of their business model being copied by the, um, uh, by the uh, established competitors. So Mr. Dean stated that the board has always been particularly keen to explore international market. That's the reason that we want to acquire the FRG. To build a worldwide brand, he informed at the meeting that he has identified FRG, a company in Sealand, as a potential acquisition target. FRG sells large machines to trade customers, which by the way, totally different from us. We are focusing on the retail box customers. There are 65% for retail customers, only 30% Five percent for treat customers, but FRG is totally focusing on the treat customers. Also, it does not currently serve retail customers. Macroeconomic steel trends suggest that the companies, sorry, the consumer society is emerging. That means uh, there's a, there's a possibility that the retail market is rising up, which is similar to that of the Aboria. That means it's a good opportunity for you to go there. He noted that some of the machine shop suppliers are located in Sealand. Mr. Ding has not yet opened negotiation, not yet to talk about the acquisition with FRG, as he would need the authority of the board to do so. Mr. Ding provided the directors with a copy of the report which he had commissioned from the local accountancy firm in Sealand, which included information about FRG. <coughs> Mr. Dean sees the potential acquisition of FRG as an opportunity to induce the machine shop's business model into Sealand. He fully expects the country to become increasingly similar to Arboria, and so it will be suitable for the sort of the services and the product which machine shops offer. He stated that achieving quick, substantial growth through acquisition will give the company a powerful bargaining power. That means quick means powerful. It will also, uh, sorry, it will allow machine shop to develop economics of skill, including purchasing in bulk. Actually, this is a, a purchasing synergy. So in simple English, we we buy them, we buy one, the price is higher. We join together and buy them together, the price will be lower because we together has a bargaining has a higher bargaining power. All right and further drive down the product prices. This will help erect barriers to potential competition. And Mike Botwin was in 
enthusiastic about expanding into Sealand. Who is Mike Bodwin? Check. Ma Mike is the uh, chief buyer. He is very excited about the acquisition. And congratulate Mr. Ding on identifying the potential acquisition target. Violet Wang suggested that advice be sought from the consulting division of Mara and Shatun, which is which by the way they have already done that. And the machine shop's auditor about the potential acquisition of FRG, it was agreed that Violet Wang would engage Mara and Shatun to provide advices on the acquisition. That means whether it's good for them to go for it. Mrs. Wong, sorry, Ms. Wong also stated that additional finance would be required. In simple English, we do not have enough money to buy them. We have to, we need to raise up the money. We need to finance that to buy the company as the company does not have the spare cash to balance. Debt might be the best option as machine shop's current gearing is very, is, is below the industry average of 60%. This is not proved. You need to calculate. You need to use the figure to calculate whether the 60% is correct, right? This is the basic way for us to challenge him, challenge her, sorry. And however, she would look into the financing once a decision had been made to go ahead with the acquisition. Review of the uh, operations. Mr. Butcher reported that Butcher is the operation director. Generally, the expansion program had been successful. All new stores had opened on time and the initial sales had been good. This had been helped by a successful advertising campaign. However, the additional stores had put pressure on logistics. Some pressure on logistics. Some stores had experiences stock out of some particular product. Stock out in period for leading up to December holiday period. And the uh, core reason appears to be unexpectedly high demand for some product, leading to store requiring more goods than the central warehousing. Oh, they are using a very old way of managing their inventory services. They are using the central warehouse. Why? The central warehouse uh, requires a great amount of the uh, capital injections to build up the central warehouse and in terms of the um, in terms of the facility phase um, and also in terms of the maintenance and the repair of their uh, IT systems. So the central warehouse is a very old way. The question asks you to consider whether the central warehouse way is still suitable or a new way to be considered. For example, we can ask our suppliers to take good care of our inventories. Whenever we need, they give it to us. It's called a just-in-time systems. So the Logic behind the questions ask you to talk about the potential just-in-time system being used at the machine shop instead of or to replace the central warehouse systems. And emergency order have to be placed. That means the cost, extra cost must be spent. Mr. Butcher said that he believes that the company needs to invest in more sophisticated information technology systems to improve the procurement and inventory control both at the store and at the central warehouse. He also said that many competitors are investing in big data technology to help them react to changes in customer demand more quickly. That means big data technologies to help us to know the real demand of the customer accordingly, uh, have the enough product to suit their true need, right? And while machine shop does not currently make sales online, the company's sales pr processing system to uh, do provide a considerable amount of data which could be analyzed more. Violet Wong commented that with the high number of stores which the company now operates, it needs to ex examine its internal control needs. Also, the machine shop is privately owned and therefore not subject to stock market listing rules. That means the stock, if you list it, if you are listed, according to the uh, jurisdictions, you need to have your internal control functions. But since we are not listed, internal control functions are not necessary, not required by law. However, do we really need it? Probably yes. If you need it, just go for setting up or it's, so the question asks you to think about the reasons to set up the internal control functions. That's the reason.
And ex external auditors have been suggested that the setting up of the uh, formal internal audit functions would be beneficial. It was agreed that the external auditors, external auditors would be asked to advise the board on whether it would be the uh, whether it would be worth setting up an internal audit functions to review the internal control problems over purchasing and the inventory control. Conclusion of the meeting: There being no further business, the meeting ended. All right, guys, it's also very simple. So, exhibit number five are basically information about your procurement system and the inventory control systems which will not be talked about it today because we have not studied the technical uh, knowledges first before the technical part of the knowledge you will not be thoroughly understanding the uh, logic behind it uh, when I teach I need you to have the relevant knowledge first then we can explore these articles or the experts later on right expert number six guys the final one <clears throat> this is the letter from um, Duff, sorry, Dave Ding to Aspen Spencer. And it's about the uh, FRG because the um, Dave Ding have, have asked the uh, Smith and the Patel complaint to have a due diligence uh, services for Dave Ding to understand the FRG better. Let's read. As promised, please find below some background information. Um, FRG that has been provided to us by Smith and Patel, Chartered Accountant in Sealand. And here are the uh, entire, uh, the um, complete letters. Let's read it now. The letter is actually from Smith and Patel to Jeff Dean. So, dear Mr. Dean, as requested, here is some background information about FRG. FRG currently has 30 depots in Sealand supplying large machine tools solely to trade customers. It does not sell the products to retail customers. It has an effective distribution network and the sales team, which is experienced in selling to Sealand businesses. FRG is a privately owned company with 30 shareholders, including local trade union. Right? What does it mean? 30 shareholders, including a trade union. That means the management of different stakeholders are very difficult, especially when there is a trade union. Trade union always asking for more. Their bargaining powers are rather high. So if you acquire a company like FRG, the first problem you probably you need to deal with is the trade union. If you want to have some, uh, if you want to make some redundancies of your stuff and or um, um, inject some of your stocks into their teams, that's a big problem because the trade union will be first standing out to challenge you on that decision making. Guys, so uh, after that, here is the FRG's basic financial information. And as you can see that the revenue is rather high. In simple English, if we acquire the FRG, the market share of FRG is big enough. We do not have to uh, spend that much of time on that market building exercises. We don't have to build the market that much because the market is already established. There's a 9 million revenues each year. It's rather good. All right, guys, that's it. Congratulations. We've finished reading the entire questions. What do you think? The questions actually was um, very easy if you have the basic fundamental knowledge behind it. So the questions, the questions ask you to comprehensively evaluate the companies uh, in terms of the acquisition, in terms of the uh, big data analytical skills, in terms of the uh, financing, um, financing methods. So um, I believe everybody wants to attempt that questions at this moment. However, we're gonna take a break because after the break, I have to show you how the marks will be given by the examining team according to four different answers booklets by the students. All right, guys, that's it. Let's take a short break. After that, we come back to talk about your answers now. Enjoy, please. <laughs> 